Hello, and welcome to this Technic Force tutorial. In this video, we're going to discuss how to create and manage memberships for sales. In other tutorials, we've taken a look at sales funnels, and we've also taken a look at membership funnels. In this video, we're going to discuss how to merge those two into membership sales funnels. If we take a look at our funnel listings, we see that we have a couple of different membership funnels set up and some sales funnels as well. Provided we have the membership funnels set up already, where the merger actually takes place is within the sales funnel. So let's go to our sales funnel and open that for editing. And in this case, the page that we're using to opt in our customers is the order form. So let's select the order form page and then open the page settings. Here we can take a look and see that we have already added signups to this order form to our customer mailing list. Let's go ahead and add an additional list to this and we'll call this paid members and this will be our new list for membership sales. If we don't already have a list for that, we can go to lists in the sidebar and create a new list. When we're adding lists to a page, we can choose as many as we want. The next item we'll do is we'll select membership access. And we saw in our funnel listings that we have two membership sites set up already. And here they both are. Now we can choose to add any combination of memberships to this opt-in page so that when a customer makes a purchase on this order form, they will be added to any membership sites that we select here. So for this demo, let's select one. We'll select member two and then we'll save our settings. Now, when a customer purchases using this order form, they'll be automatically added as a member to the membership called Member2. And as well, they'll be added to our mailing lists for customer and paid members. These lists are important because they are linked to our various sequences. So let's go to our sequences and we'll just take a look and see what's linked there. And here we can see with a quick glance that we do have a couple of sequences already connected to the customer list and paid members list. So since we took a close look at this sequence in the previous tutorial about automated emails for sales, let's take a look at this sequence this time specifically for paid members. We'll open this sequence for editing. Here we have the sequence title that we gave for our own reference but that's separate from the email subject that the customer, now a member, will receive called Your Product and Membership Details. We've selected a SMTP, in this case the default hosting mailer, and we'll select the lists that we want this sequence attached to. In this case, we want it for the paid members. And we can also set the duration after which the purchase that we send the mail. In this case, we'll set it for during sign up. There's no need for an unsubscription message. And here in the email text body, we can see that we have included a list of your products with a products loop. And we've discussed about automated sales emails exactly how a products loop works in that this loop opens with products and ends with slash products. And within it, it will display the product ID number and the product title and the product URL for each product that the customer purchases. What's new in this email is a list of membership details below. So here we've put a header for your membership details and it's followed by a format that looks very familiar when we compare it to the products loop above. Here we can see that it opens with curly brackets members and closes with slash members curly brackets. And this creates a membership loop. And very similar to how this loop showed all the details for all of the products that the customer purchased, this members loop will show the relevant membership details for all of the memberships that they have been assigned to. Within this membership loop, we're displaying the payment ID, the member login URL, the member's email, the member's password, the member's payer name and payer email, and the total paid. And here we have a short code from the product list for product currency. Now you can get help with all of these short codes by going to the help section here in the sidebar. We'll open this in a new tab just for reference. 
And here we can see templating with membership details. Here is a list of some of the shortcodes that we can display with single variables. The name and the email is standard because we'll need that for every login. If you've collected any other dynamic variables, they can be recalled simply by including that input within the curly brackets. For example, if you collected address, you could use address within the curly brackets. In the case of multiple memberships, you can use a members loop. And that's done by opening the loop with curly brackets members and closing the loop with curly brackets slash members and including your various data within. Whatever data you choose to include within the loop will be repeated for every membership that that member belongs to. As an example, you can see here, you can open the loop with members, close the loop with slash members, and you can customize the email with a little bit of text so that's more legible for the user. And then when this renders in their email, this is how it will appear. Instead of the short code for login URL, it will display the actual login URL. For their member email and password, it will display their actual email and password. And because this was within a loop, it will repeat that for every membership that they belong to. So let's go back to our sequence and make sure we click Save, just in case we made any changes. And then we'll go to our funnel. So here is our sales funnel. Let's just open that in a new tab. And we'll just scroll down to the get access and this should take us to the order form. And we'll input some test credentials. And then we'll submit. And this opens the payment method that is set within the sales funnel. So we'll go ahead and process that. And here we can expand the cart to see exactly what was within the bundle that we're purchasing and then continue. And that brings us to the confirmation page, which is the next page in the funnel and lets us know that an email has been sent to the ID we provided. So let's go to our inbox and we see here that we received two emails. One thanking us for a purchase and one for our product and membership details. Now the reason there's two emails here, if you'll recall from our funnel, is let's just go back into the editor and we'll take a look at the order form page. And we'll see that under lists, this was forwarded to two separate lists, customer and paid members. And if we go to look at our sequences to see the automated emails, we have a purchase confirmation set up for customer and paid members. So these are the two emails that were generated automatically and sent to the customer. To remedy that, we might want to go back to the opt-in page and remove one of the lists. There. Now we know that people who opt in through this list will be automatically added to a membership and they'll receive the appropriate email with their product and membership details as opposed to their purchase details only. So let's go ahead and check out this email. And let's compare this to the sequence that we set up for the product member test. So here we can see we started the email with a products loop with all of our products listed for the product ID, product title, and product URL. And here, that is exactly what we have. A product loop showing all of our products, including the ID, title, and URL. And then below that, we see membership details. So let's look at our sequence. And in the membership details, we have a members loop with the payment number, login, user, password, payment name, payment email, and total paid. And here in the email, that's exactly what we have. The payment number, login, user, password, pa payment name, payment email, and total paid. And here we can see the effect of that combination of elements, 360 USD. That was made as a result of putting member total paid 
combined with product currency. So you can combine these short codes to create the information that your customer needs. Now let's take a look at their members page. We'll select the login page here. And that opens in a new window. And here we'll copy our username. And the password is automatically generated for us. We'll go ahead and input that and log in. And here we can see a listing of all of the products that we purchased. And if we actually go to the funnel, and here is our member two funnel, we'll open this. Let's take a look at this membership page here. And let's just take a look at this existing page. You'll see that the product table here is set up as a product loop, meaning that within the table, it displays the product ID and title, URL, payment ID, and date for each separate product that the member owns. And this is how it renders within the product page. Product ID, title, URL, payment ID, and date. And you also have the ability to duplicate this product loop within the page as well. Let's go to the editor and let's adjust the text here. And we can insert a product loop here that opens with the product loop and closes with the product loop slash products. And within there, we can put a phrase something like, you can find more information about your product title at product URL. And then we'll save our changes. And now let's go back to our membership page and we'll refresh the page to see how that is going to affect within the description. And you can see here is the product loop that we just created. You can find more information about your e-learning bundle at URL, product title, URL, product title, URL, and so on down the line. If we were to remove this product loop here, it would display this information only for the very first product ID. So we'll go ahead and save our changes. Go back to our membership page, refresh the page, and we can see here it shows only the very first product on our list. Now within the page editor, there is another way that we can create a product loop. There are times, like for example, with this table, where it's just not convenient or practical to be able to write out the product loop as a curly brackets products with curly brackets slash products to close the loop. So when you have several elements like each of these data fields, we can create a product loop using several elements by using a function called CF loop. So for example, if we wanted to loop the description here as well as this title, what we could do is we could select the larger block of information here. And because we've already been running product loops here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start this template with a fresh slate. We're gonna go back to Cloud Funnels. I'm gonna select the membership page. I'm gonna refresh the template. Now that we have a brand new template, I'm going to edit the existing page again. And that refreshes our page back to the original template but it also clears any confusing code that might be remaining after our previous tampering that we did in the earlier tutorial. So what we'll do now is to loop the title and the description is we'll select the block that contains both of those elements. And this larger block here, now that we've selected it, we'll go to component settings and we'll assign this block as a CF loop products. And that turns this entire block here into a, a product loop now we can go in to the specific text block here and we'll just put the elements of our product loop that we want included in this case it'll just be the product title and url and then save our changes now when we go back to our browser we'll refresh the page and here we can see it's created a product loop, including the title, all the elements that were within that larger text box. 
Now we're not limited to using only product info inputs. We can also use a variety of other inputs that are collected via our sales order page, as well as any data that's returned by our payment method or IPN. For example, let's take a look at our sales page. And we'll take a look at the order form. Here in the order form, we've collected inputs for name, email address, phone number, address, city, state, and zip code. CloudFunnels even takes it one step further. When the client enters their full name, CloudFunnels has the ability to take that input and split it into first name and last name. And you can use this input operator here first underscore name or last underscore name. And you can use this throughout the membership pages or throughout the rest of CloudFunnels, like in the email sequences or compose mail. To see the types of inputs that are available for a given page or project, go to the page settings and you can see the valid input names for the project and page. You can add new inputs by entering them into the page field. For example, address street, address town, address state, and address zip. When you save your changes, these will be added from the page to the project. So these input names are now valid throughout the project. When you go to look at your members listings here in the members tab, you can see all of your members listed by just clicking the total members number. And you'll be able to see all the input values listed for each member in the table by scrolling across. So now let's head back to our page editor and we'll save our template. Then we could head back to our browser and we can see the name decodes as test, and the email was our admin email here. And it's looped including a title. And that's just a few tips on how you can create and manage your membership and sales pages in CloudFunnels. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thanks very much for watching.